is going on youtubers jay here from mj tech today is memorial day so we don't work and well i thought i was going to have a nice fun day outside but as you can tell super rainy it will rain the whole entire day and so we got here the megamoto 212 that i got from gopowersports.com and today i got more parts and in case you didn't know i got pretty much everything from gopowersports.com so make sure you guys check them out they have uh, everything you need basically the only two things i didn't get from them were the tires i got these off ebay and that little muffler right here that i got from ebay as well but today we're going to be doing here the flywheel and the part number is actually on top of the box it is the 66 eight nine so we got this baby that we're gonna put on right there so we had to take that apart we got here an ignition coil so that we can remove the one with the rev limiter inside I got this also from them I did get one from Amazon but I was having a lot of issues so I just took it off and put back the one with the rev limiter and check this out guys I couldn't resist my wife almost killed me but I got here the Juggernaut from them as well. We can see right here the name of it. Okay, so this one uh, gives you better grip on higher RPMs as we know. We're going to unrestrict this bike. So why not get the parts that go along with it? And then hopefully when it doesn't rain anymore, we can go out there and test it out when I did the first video of this particular bike, I uh, mentioned that, uh, or actually demonstrated, that it goes as it is right now, 47 miles an hour, not broken in. So we have the red limiter, which uh, kicks in after 6,000 RPMs, and that's mainly the reason why we're not going any faster. But at the same time, going above 6,000 RPMs and having that stock flywheel on there, it's a big risk, okay? So just make sure that you guys get the proper parts before uh, making your engine a lot faster. So this one here is actually pretty cool. It starts from the first pull being cold. So that's uh, awesome. And yeah, let's get to it and see what the outcome is. All right, so we are all set here. From what I can see, I got a few tools. Uh, it will be helpful if you can get some impact tools. We will need an email meter socket with the extension. You're gonna need the ratchet. You will need a 10 millimeter wrench as well so that we can take out here the intake manifold or not take it out but get it loose enough so that we can take the wire out here from the old um, ignition coil. And then you're gonna need some of these so that you can take out that big nut holding the stock flywheel. And yeah, let's get started. Alright guys, so to get this flywheel removed, what you have to do is get a pry bar. Luckily for me, having this engine put on this frame, well it makes it so that I can put the pry bar right behind it and not be uh, putting pressure on the crankcase, which uh, can crack very easily. But if you don't have this, and you need to find a solid place, which is going to be here mainly where the mount is. And then just try to put your pry bar around that area, apply pressure. Put the nut back on, the one that you took off for this piece here. So just put that back on and tap it with the hammer and eventually it'll come loose. In my case, it came loose already. So now all we have to do is just pull it out and it is that simple. So this is the one that again, we're gonna be putting on. 
right now okay and it is always recommended that when you put that nut back on just apply a little bit of uh, blue thread locker okay All right guys, so as you can witness here, we got the new ignition coil already installed. Now for the spacing, what I use is a business card and I go like this and then I like to leave even a slightly bigger gap on there. Like I would say maybe twice the thickness of a business card. And right now you can see that it goes in and out very easily. It is barely touching here the ignition coil okay so it is moving quite freely and then after that I just tighten it up using the 8 millimeter with the extension make sure that it goes in quite tight okay then this here uh, this is a 21 millimeters yes a 21 millimeters make sure that you add like I said before a little bit of thread locker okay and that should do the trick I got here the intake manifold bolted up. These are 10 millimeter uh, nuts. And you can see that I ran the wire just like it was with the other one. And so everything should be good to go. It should be able to start. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this stuff installed and crank it up and see what we get. And we are ready to crank it up. Let's see what we got, guys. Boom. All right, guys. I need to say no more. This thing worked. And so now we're going to jump into the other side, replace uh, or install this juggernaut. And then we're going to go for a ride and see how fast we can go now. A few moments later. Okay, guys. So you are almost done here. All we have left is to install here the uh, juggernaut. I went for a quick ride. This thing is riding perfect now. And keep in mind that the engine is still breaking in. So we have to give it some more time before we can actually go, you know, full speed. So let's go ahead and remove this piece now we might have to remove this uh, back piece if you have to this is a 24 uh, millimeter nut I'm gonna try not to but if you have to then that will suck a little but it is what it is so let's get started
All right guys, so that was actually quite simple. I didn't have to remove this back piece, but once again, I was ready to do so if it did require it. Now all we gotta do is just use that uh, stock bolt that we uh, were using before, and we can keep this to the side for now. Uh, hopefully things will work great. Now, I will definitely recommend adding a little bit of uh, blue Loctite into this bolt as well. It just keeps things uh, sturdier. You don't have that thought in the back of your head saying, oh, will it come off? No, it's nice and smooth. So now let's go ahead and rebolt this. There you go. And we are done. Now it is time to reassemble here the cover. Let's go for a ride. Let's see if that did improve the overall speeds. I'm gonna add my cell phone here. I'll have the GoPro with me. And so we're gonna do a quick run. Just keep in mind that this motor is not fully broken in yet. So you have to take that into consideration. But the good news is that we don't have it restricted with that ignition coil uh, that had the rev limiter. So let's go for a ride. Let's have some fun and I'll be right back. Hopefully you guys can see the uh, speedometer right here. Here we go. So with the exception that I am getting a little bit of a gas leak here from the gas cap, I, I will be replacing that gas cap or even the whole gas tank very soon. Um, I pay like 12 bucks for this and I think that's why I came out to be so bad. But yes, we did about uh, 53 uh, miles an hour here on the, uh, on the GPS. You guys can see it right here. And I have here my brother-in-law with the first bike that I ever created. Um, actually, this is my second bike. I'm sorry. It's not the first one. It's my second bike. That's a 49cc four-stroke. Uh, he has had it since, uh, I think, 20, 2018, I believe, 2019. Uh, it's been about three, four years. Uh, great little bike right there. 
So yes guys, uh, we did improve the speed, uh, but I did spend like about $260 on parts. We got the juggernaut, we got the ignition coil, and then we have the flywheel on here. But the engine is not broken in yet, so I, I think that once we break in the engine and everything is nice and loose on here, uh, we should be able to hit 60. So yes, today uh, I'm happy with what I did. 53 I think is, is more than okay. So with this being said guys, let me know down below what you think about this particular motor. Uh, no internal work was done. Uh, everything I've done was just superficial. Uh, again, that juggernaut, the flywheel, and the ignition coil. Uh, I gotta tell you guys, so far I, I love it. As a matter of fact, my sister wants, wants to get it from me, and I might just leave it here. Uh, I drove uh, about two hours uh, with this bike to, to show it to them, and I gotta say, I'm in love. These tires are definitely recommended if you guys are gonna do a lot of street riding. Uh, so yes, uh, please comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more, comment, and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos like this. See you in the next one.